Welcome to another interview on the People Productivity Channel, where you are the product and a better you is a solution. Today we have on Roberta Matcheson, um, an individual that, wow, I tell you, I wrote a book and I spent so much time. Roberta's done five books and will soon be under contract for a sixth. Uh, she consults, she publishes tons of great material, and I think she is a thought leader. And, understands leadership and leadership excellence incredibly well, how to get the best out of talent. So Roberta, welcome to the channel. Maybe you could start by just sharing a little bit about yourself with our guests, our viewers. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, well, I was really excited to, in, to be invited to join you. Um, mm -hmm. Today, according to LinkedIn, I've been in business for 23 years. <laughs> <laughs> so thank, I, I'm very grateful that LinkedIn reminds us because um, I feel like I've been in business for only 20 years, but um, I have had my own consulting practice uh, for 23 years. Yeah, and I can not honestly, easy to do. No, it is not. not but I can easy honestly to do. say that um, I've never operated in an environment like we're in today. Yeah, agreed. So, um, you know, a lot of people look at what's happening in the world, and right now we're in the middle of the pandemic, mm -hmm. in case people are watching this a year or two from now, or 20 years from now, um, and nobody seems to have answers because we've never been through this, but I think that we can all agree that as we come out of this, things are going to be remarkably different. Yeah. We are entering a new world that is incredibly different. I think today's topic... Um, which is really to review the new talent roadmap you put together and share with our audience some of the things they should be thinking about. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they do, they are on a new journey. Some people, you know, they were on a journey, they had all their plans and strategies in place and, you know, those are gone. Uh, the world I is different. They're if they're not gone, they need to be torn up because they're no longer relevant. That's correct. Um, and it remains to be seen exactly how the world changes. So I know your roadmap has four stops on it. And I thought we'd talk through these four stops so that our guests can understand how you put this together and things that they should be thinking about. Uh, at the end, I would like to just talk about, you know, some unexpected, you know, turns that people may face. Maybe we can brainstorm a little bit. Absolutely. You know, it's going to be very different. Even though people will revise their roadmap, I would say expect the unexpected. That's what this year has been about. And that seems like the new world we've entered, where, you know, trying to, you know, forecast something and lay out a definitive plan um, certainly is fraught with, you know, the need to constantly change and keep it updated. Maybe the buzzword agile is what everybody should be gearing towards, right? To remain agile and resilient in the face of unprecedented change, right? Well, I think we have to look at this um, and operate the same way a GPS system would operate. And you know how a lot of times your car GPS will tell you to turn right and you're like, I'm not turning right. I don't like that highway. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and you decide to keep going straight and it will say recalculating. Um, yeah. and so I think we all need to be prepared to recalculate and not take the exit that we thought we might be taking because it's dangerous at that exit or there's actually a dead end there that yeah. wasn't there before. And I think That's we right. just need to be able to recalculate and do that quickly, which comes back to what you talk about, you know, agility. Yeah, very much a case. So um, let's talk about the first stop, reimagining your business and workplace. So yeah. let's get your thoughts on that. Well, you know, it's funny. I was talking to a client um, just before we hopped on our call, and I just said, you know, just pretend that you're opening your business today. What would your business look like and feel like today? Uh -huh. Forget about what it was because it's not going to be. And so when you reimagine, you know, bring that, you know, kid back, you know, when you were a kid and you thought anything was possible, mm -hmm. now you really need to think about the fact that <clears throat> everything is possible. And so what do you want your <clears throat> company to look like? And so what I recommend you do is you set aside 90 minutes 
with your senior management team mm -hmm. and you set it aside on Zoom and you ask yourselves, you know, a bunch of questions. I'll share a few of them and then later sure. on we tell um, the people watching how they can get the report, the roadmap that, that yeah, I will be we happy definitely to want them to download it. So, you know, the first question is, you know, what services or products will you no longer be offering? Mm -hmm. Right? Because there are some things that no longer make sense. Um, and then you need to look at what are, what are the new services and products that you will be offering? Because when you figure this out, um, you will then be able to plan for your talent, right? Mm -hmm. And then the third question is you have to really think about, are you going to be expanding your business or are you going to be contracting? Because if you're going to be contracting, there might be people who are in jobs right now that you can move to other jobs. Mm -hmm. So you've got to really get clear. What does your future look like so that you can begin to reimagine what your talent playbook will look like? Yeah, I, uh, I couldn't agree more. I mean, at the end of the day, the future is very different than the past at this point. And yeah, it's no of, longer. <laughs> yeah. The notion of reimagining is the right one. And to look at everything you do and reimagine it in light of where you think the world and your industry are headed. You know, it's funny you should say that because um, yesterday I actually, you know, in Massachusetts um, on Monday, it was Monday actually, mm -hmm. nail salons opened up, which, you uh -huh. know, was a big deal. <laughs> and I feel like I hit the lottery. I got an appointment. Yeah. And when I walked in, I didn't recognize the place. And I said to the guy, like, I know it's been a long time since I've been here, but were, were those cabinets there? Did the place look like this? And, you know, what was so interesting to me is that what wound up happening is this particular company invested the time when they were, you know, shut down to really reimagine what the experience would be like. And man, that place is like 10 times better than what it was before. And I think they're gonna be a lot more successful in a very competitive business. Yes, and the reality is that there'll be a bunch of people looking for new nail salons. So it's a great yeah. time to outcompete. Yes. Customers are shifting. But they completely, I, I thought I was in the wrong place. I'm like, whoa. Uh-huh, no, I, 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 I thought I was in the wrong place. I, you know, it's funny. Uh, they opened in New Jersey on Monday too. And I happened to have the first haircut where Ooh. I go, you know, cause they called up and said, Hey, you know, we're going to be opening. Do you want to come back? And yeah, the place looked very different. They really had done a very good job prepping, but it was, uh, it was kind of surreal wearing a mask and getting a haircut. I got to tell you. Well, try being a woman and being in that salon a lot longer than 20 minutes. <laughs> <After life. laughs> yeah. So um, in terms of reimagining, you know, uh, I guess, you know, looking at the whole staff situation, right? Who's out on furlough? Who might bring back? How you bring them back? All of this stuff is going to be very, very important, right? That's why you've got to get the model of your future right. Right. And so, you know, people are assuming that people are going to come back. And I'm assuming that some of those people are going to get better opportunities or they're not going to come back. They're not going to be willing to come back given the conditions that they have to work in. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you've got to have a plan A, B, C, and a plan D. Yeah, very much a case, right? So given that talent is going to be at the core of any success, you know, your next stop is redefining roles and expectations. Why don't we talk about that? Well, you know, once you know where you're going, then you have to look at, you know, what are the roles? What do, who do I need here? And so what I'm recommending to my clients, because I do advise like some of the top leaders in companies across all industries, is I, I just said, you know, keep it simple. Get some index cards and write down, like, you know, instead of creating an org chart, just write down like the job titles of everybody and you know, their names mm -hmm. and you know, two separate cards, you know, your, the jobs that you're going to need and lay them out, lay them out on a table and then look at the people, the cards with the people and mm -hmm. start moving people around and see who might fit where. 
and see what roles might change. But you cannot simply just take out the old job descriptions and say, well, this is your job when it doesn't even closely resemble what mm -hmm. the person's going to be doing. And then the next piece is you have to sit down and really redefine the expectations. So for example, you know, you have salespeople who back in January received these goals, right? You're supposed to grow sales by 7% yeah. mm -hmm. and 20. Um, unless you're working for Zoom, <laughs> yeah. highly unlikely that those goals are still realistic. So you have to go back and redefine them. Yeah, and recalibrate. Say, okay, yeah, we're looking for, you know, 5% growth this year, mm -hmm. you know, or we're not going to give out bonuses this year. You all need to know that. Like you, you got to get real, you got to get transparent. I think the transparency is really, really important. I mean, people do want to know and understand, you know, that the company they work for is going to make it. They have the rack together. Sharing what's happening is vitally important if they want to keep their best people. You know? Yes, absolutely. That whole notion of strategic trust. Um, you know, attracting top talent. This is a great time because people will be out looking. Well, there are people out looking, but there are also people who aren't looking. And those people who aren't looking are all at home. And so they're free to have a conversation with you. Yeah. Whereas before, you know, you'd call into the office and they'd be like, oh, I can't talk right now. You know, now they're home, they can speak freely, yeah. um, <clears throat> schedule meetings with people. It's mm -hmm. like remarkable how different it is. And, you know, there are a lot of people who may be very disappointed with the way their companies have handled this situation through the pandemic. And there are other companies that have done, that have done a spectacular job. And so, you know, word is on the street that your company's done a great job then people are more apt to take a call. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, clearly this is a time where people who are uncertain are willing to listen. I agree with you. Yes, because they have nothing to lose. Yeah, and everything to gain actually. Yes. So they've gotten all their job expectations down, right? They understand what the new roles are. They've looked at what jobs they could fill internally, and now they go out to try to fill any open slots that they're going to have. So, you know, in my book, Evergreen Talent, which just came out, um, mm -hmm. came out in February, perfect timing. Yeah. Uh, you know, I talk about how you have to seed, grow, and cultivate a sustainable workforce. And that starts by, you know, finding the right seeds, right? And then planting mm -hmm. them and nurturing them. And the best way to do that is to really network with, with people and find out who they know, who might know somebody else that would be a great addition to your staff. You will also really need to attract talent towards you. And there's no better way to do that than with your employment brand. Mm -hmm. You know, what people think about you when you're not in the room. Yeah. I mean, the external brand of the company is so vitally important. And so many companies didn't manage your brand, nor did they make the brand appealing to millennials. Well, forget about millennials. I'm sorry if you guys are listening. I mean, there's Generation yeah. Z. <laughs> yes, Gen Z is in the workforce now. So. They are in the workforce. So there's a whole bunch of people. But the, the great news is, is that everybody really wants the same thing. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm recommending to my clients, you know, many of them have these really cool workspaces and they have company slides. Like no one's going down a slide anymore, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. nobody's going to be sitting you know at the company bar like it's not going to be happening so this is the time to really look internally and figure out how to rebrand so that when people come to your website you know they look at your website and they say yeah i would be comfortable coming to work there mm -hmm. not like oh that looks like really cool but nobody's allowed to sit at the tables yeah yeah, I mean, that does require some real rethinking and rebranding. And companies, yes, many yes. companies failed to brand to attract that younger segment of the workforce before. You know, well, this is cool great places. because they haven't wasted their time, right? You get to, yeah. you get a do-over, people. That's the part I'm really excited about. I am helping companies get a do-over. You know, I'm helping them build their incredible employment brands and really getting the word out. And that is really fun. Yeah. 
very much the case. And I think this is no better time than now to do it because they should be asking all the questions about who they are becoming. Right, and that goes back to reimagining, right? Yeah. So let's, let's start to reimagine what is the new us? We're opening up today. What do we look like? What do we feel like? Who do we want to be? What do we want to be known for? Yeah, and this is a great time on the recruiting side, like we said before. And you know, in this new talent roadmap, you list a, just a whole bunch of things that they can do, like building relationships with professors, right? Strengthening their social media presence, which they should be doing anyway. Yeah. There's a host of things. I mean, they should be asking their star employees who they know. Yeah, uh, their vendors. They, yeah, be, they should be mining LinkedIn for talent. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a ton of things they can be doing. They don't have to be paying, you know, third-party re recruiters to do this. No, they could. They can certainly find tons of capable people on LinkedIn. No right, but you want to find the right people, you know, and that's the problem. A lot of companies think, oh, we'll just put up a posting. And, you know, right. if you do that today, you're going to get, by tonight, probably a thousand or more resumes by tonight. Yeah. It's and, a horrible way to hire. Right, but don't forget, you've let go half of your HR department. You put them on furlough. So mm -hmm. who's going to be going through these resumes? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Very much a case. Now, so in this new are, world, they've got to also manage to keep them. Yes, because what is the point of hiring great people if you can't keep them? Mm -hmm. I think uh, managers are having some of the most difficult time adjusting to this hybrid world of work, mostly work from home. But, you know, we're heading into this hybrid world. There'll be some traditional work going on, mingled with a lot of remote work. And, uh, you know, managers you know, built a style around having people around and the ability to inspire people remotely and do things, you know, is a challenge for many of them, lead from anywhere. You know, they haven't built these skills and I think companies really have to do a good job building this lead, manage and hire from anywhere bench of people. Um, well, it's funny you should say that because I put together a program um, called Suddenly in Charge Virtually for new uh, leaders who are suddenly in charge because people are getting promoted. Yeah. And they've been promoted, they've never managed, and they're trying to manage a remote workforce, which as you and I know, is even more complicated than in the office and you can run down the hall and ask your boss a question. And so I put together this exclusive coaching program uh -huh. and it's really been fantastic. It's great to see people blossom mm -hmm. and you know those people who are suddenly in charge virtually will turn out to be much stronger leaders i think than the people who've been leading for years yes i think they're going to learn to lead the way they need to lead today right and we're going to be in this for a while well we're never going back to what it was the whole no, notion of people commuting to a downtown center to go to a big building and ride elevators up to floors that are crowded with people. I don't see that happen. I don't either. Companies saying, look, this worked, we're gonna shed this commercial real estate and uh, that is what's gonna happen. And you know, this hybrid world of work and how do you build your company lead and manage in this is really the key question. How do you innovate in a hybrid work world? Um, how do you retain people? And as you and I both know, people don't leave companies, they leave their managers, right? Absolutely. So, you know, the managers who didn't have it right before or leaders who didn't get it right when they were in the office, you know, they couldn't be bothered going down to some of these other floors to meet the people because they stayed where they were. I'd say they're in real trouble, mm -hmm. you know, because they were already distant from people when they were nearby. Imagine now what it's like. Right. And I also, um, in some ways... <laughs> I feel sorry for the micromanagers because oh yes, it's a little harder to micromanage when your team is spread out, and you know it's more obvious when you're calling them every hour than it is when you happen to be walking by for another cup of coffee. So yeah, yeah, it's <clears throat> it's not going to work. They didn't develop the right skills to you know empower people, so they're going to have real trouble. 
So what are you recommending? You know, this is a good conversation around kind of the challenges of this new world for keeping people because they got to keep the good ones they have and retain the good ones they are able to get their hands on. So, um, you know, what are you thinking here? I'm thinking again, you have to just reimagine. You have to just hit the reset button and you have to start from today. You cannot look back. That's in the past. You have to start from today and you have to pull your leadership team together and together come up with the strategy, the talent strategy. And you know, the good news is you can build a talent strategy out in, in less than a day. It, I don't know why the big companies, well, I do know why. They tell you yeah. it'll take months, but you yeah, can do it in a workforce planning, you know, this huge undertaking. Yeah, well, I call it a talent strategy and it takes yeah. a day and it gets the same results. But if you wanna go on a longer trip, you're certainly welcome to. But I really suggest that um, companies think about how to do things quickly because uh -huh. even though we will set the strategy, six months from now, it may change. So it has to be nimble. We have to be nimble. And we have to make sure that we have the right leadership in place and that those leaders have coaches that can help them pivot when they need to pivot. And choose leaders who really want to be leaders. Not oh, yes. happen to be good at what they were doing, so therefore they're a good worker, they'll be a good leader. That never well, works. In my book, The Magnetic Leader, I write about five things to consider when promoting somebody into leadership. And mm -hmm. the first thing is desire. Because mm -hmm. if somebody doesn't want to be a leader, none of the rest of the factors matter. Uh, agreed. Let's go through the other four then. Oh, gosh. <clears throat> Well, now you've caught me because now I have to think. <laughs> yeah, I think they were in this thing too, aptitude, traits, attitude, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yes, aptitude, traits, um, you know, they have to have the aptitude. They have to be the right kind of person for that job. Mm -hmm. um, they have to have the passion for the job. They have to enjoy being around people. They have to be a problem solver. I mean, there's a lot that goes into it. It's not just the guy or gal that is like the top producer who should be the director of sales. Yeah. So just a lot of factors to consider before you just say to somebody, okay, here's your promotion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, super important. And um, getting this leadership right is obviously one of the key things, right? Well, uh, you know, I'll just share this with you. I'm coaching somebody right now. I do a lot of executive coaching and, you know, we just got to the end of our time together and it's very, very clear to me that, mm -hmm. you know, she has worked really, really hard to, to, to move in the right direction. We could spend the next two to three years together. Yeah. And I don't believe she's ever going to get to where she needs to be, to mm -hmm. be an effective leader. And so I have to have that conversation now with, with her boss and it's a tough mm. conversation but yeah. i also have to save the 10 people that work for her oh you bet They're, she's destroying a lot of human capital she is and, and it's not intentional i mean she really wants to be this person but it's just not in her dna yeah you know in this new world of work you know talent is obviously the differentiator and you know, the leaders creating environments where people do give their best so they get the highest returns on the talent. That is, that is a skill for real. And, yes. and uh, you know, it's a very human skill in many ways. So, you know, a lot of people are going to struggle who didn't build these deeply human skills. But it's not too late. You can learn. Most of us yeah. can learn. Not everyone, but most of us can, can shift our behavior and get to a place where, we're 10 times better than we were. That's right. You know, anybody can pick up, you know, a set of clubs, practice, and actually improve their golf game. You know, getting on the PGA is a handful are going to make it. But, you know, you can, anybody can build pretty stable skills to have a decent round of golf. And that's what this is. People have to build those missing skills and competencies. Right, right but the companies have to help them. They can't expect... You know, I, I wrote about this in my newsletter the other day that, you know, when I was promoted to director of HR, you know, my boss just assumed that I knew how to interview. Uh -huh. Well, 
I was 24 years old. I barely knew anything. But he assumed, okay, you're director of HR, you should know how to select candidates and interview. Uh -huh. But there was no talk of training me. There was no talk of me taking a course. None of that. I mean, sadly, that didn't happen until like 10 years later. Yeah. Companies have unfortunately cut back on training probably too much. You know, yeah. many of them are many of them are so concerned that they've got to get this next generation of leaders in place. And I think they're rightfully concerned. But the well, opportunity they get they things right now, like not the next generation in place. I think they need to get leadership right now. Well, I agree with you. I agree with you. And then to build succession plans out of that. Learning to lead now is the most important thing. And it does require skills and competencies that people don't have. They're going to have to acquire them. So look, I think, you know, people can uh, expect the unexpected. That is no doubt what's going to happen. So what's your recommendation regarding them staying agile, nimble? Well, I recommend they do yoga. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be flexible. <laughs> yeah. You know, and you're not going to do a downward dog perfectly like your first time. You know, you're going to have to practice. You're going to have to adjust. That's why the yoga teacher walks around and adjusts your postures, right? Because you're not going to get it right the first time. But when you do, and when, you know, he or she adjusts you, you're like, oh my God, like I feel so good. And so, you know, I think you have to be open to having, you know, an expert, an advisor, um, relying on your VP of HR, if they have the expertise, I think you have to be open to getting some outside expertise in some areas that you may not be an expert in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agreed. There's no question that there are a lot of things that other people have solved that they can benefit from. Yes. And uh, they should be willing to do that. It's a very important moment in time to do that. You don't have to invent everything. It's very yeah. hard and time consuming to do that and it's not gonna work. And you don't have to do everything yourself and you don't even have to do everything. You wanna move one thing forward a mile, not 10 things forward an inch. Yeah. And of course, that is, I think one of the big things I've seen in corporate just too many times in my career is they had too many things in play at once. And humans aren't wired to do 10 things. They're wired to do three things, you know? Yes. So that is one of the risks here. And the bump in the road may be they're trying to do too much as they reinvent who they are, instead of focusing on those core things that really need to change to actually create a better future for everybody involved. Well, I think this is a really exciting time I think you and I have both witnessed just, you know, a couple of small businesses that have come out of this even stronger than when they went in. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we're not done yet, so we're still in it. But I think this is an incredible opportunity for every business leader to really reposition and to take control of the market. Yes. And to literally figure out how to help these companies, because so many do need help. They're very challenging times, unlike anything we've ever seen. Right. But you have to be open, like, you know, you have to be open to getting help. You can't think, yeah. oh, I can handle this. I have a mentor. I have a coach. It's like, like, I know that I've never been through this. I need somebody that I can ask questions who mm -hmm. can give me a different perspective. So I think it's really helpful. Yeah, I do too. So any, uh, any thoughts for our listeners as we come to the conclusion of this? Well, I, you know, my offer to your listeners is if they have any questions on talent, you know, that I'm happy to set aside 30 minutes. My compliments just mentioned um, your show. So I know mm -hmm. you're not like some guy who came out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, email me at roberta at matchesonconsulting.com. Uh, that's M-A-T-U-S-O-N. Uh -huh. And then also, if they'd like a free copy of the roadmap, uh, again, send an email to me. Just put roadmap in the subject line and it's yours.
Yeah, and they should certainly go to your website as well, which is loaded with valuable information. You have all of your posts. There's so much information on that site. It's amazing. Lots of free resources. Lots of very good free resources. So, you know, I think you're a whirlwind when it comes to putting out good material. And that's why everybody should go to your site. There's a lot they could benefit from. And that is an incredibly generous offer, that half hour. So thank you for giving that to our listeners. I think that's fabulous. You're a very accomplished person. Well, thank you. So, Roberta, thanks so much for coming on. And certainly, uh, I think you'd be a great guest to have back on. So let's think about getting you back on down the road. I know you have another book coming. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> yeah. So thanks so much. Be well. You too.